tonight on Blue Mondays. We visit the local Carpenters Union where they have a meeting to talk about the Employee Free Choice Act. We're able to talk to a lot of local and national leaders in the labor movement scene. And you'll want to hear what they have to say. All that and more tonight on Blue Mondays for May 11, 2009. Good evening and welcome to Blue Mondays. Tonight we have a special Blue Mondays for you that we're coming to you live from the Carpenters Union Hall where we just got done with a great meeting uh, that we're going to bring you some of the clips and some of the interviews from some of the local labor leaders to talk to you about why the Employee Free Choice Act is so important to the working men and women of this country and especially here in Louisiana where we have such high poverty rates. Uh, we've got a lot of great interviews for you tonight. It's going to be a fast-paced show. Thanks for watching and we'll talk to you at the end. But it, it does circumvent it. How do we respond to that? How do we, how do we make that a non-issue rather than the issue? Because the, stuff, the rest of the stuff in there is really a lot more harmful to business, if they look at it, than the car check issue. So how do we turn that into a negative? They are starting to back off the secret ballot issue a, a, a little bit because we have um, beat them down so much on it. Now they're going on, they're really hard, honing in on the binding arbitration. But we're not using card check, because it isn't card check, it's majority sign up. If the majority of the workers sign and say they want a union, then that's what it is. And, and to back them off, I don't know how we back them off, but it's wrong. We are not taking away the secret ballot. The bill does not take away the secret ballot, it says, the worker has a choice on whether they want to go with majority sign up or have a secret ballot election. It Amen. does not take away the secret ballot. Amen. And by the way, in the Republican Party Constitution, there's a phrase in there, and they've shown me the language, they, are, they don't allow secret ballots. Nope. So I don't know what the heck Vitter's talking about. Right. But, um... And, and they portray us as intimidating and as thugs and we're intimidating people. Well, people want a better way of life. Most of our organize, organizing leads now are not because of wages or um, so much benefits. Most of them are about fairness from the employer mistreatment of workers. When companies treat their workers right, their workers don't care about a union. And if workers don't want a union, then so be it. But if, if employers are, are mistreating their workers, the workers, a person can only take so much of that. And then they want to do something about it. And so the, the, the car check, it's just smoke and mirrors, and now we beat them down so much they're shifting to the binding arbitration. Well, all they're going to do, I mean, this is not a big deal. All she do is give the contract. They all got contracts. Why shouldn't we have a contract, too? You know, they want to talk anti-union. Biggest union in America. What's the chamber? Yes. The chamber is one big freaking union. AMA is one big freaking union. National Association of Manufacturers. A union. Same thing. They got one, right. so we should get to have one too. That's and I don't know if they answered your question enough or not, but uh, well, it, it just, it's, it's just bull. It's, it's a phony argument. I just know that uh, if I were organizing a union, <coughs> I would definitely do the majority sign up to avoid the election process. Yeah. Which is what I'm saying. That well, when I, I hear their, their gripe, I, I can see where they're coming well, from yeah, because they, they know what we're going to do. Well, they don't. They, but how do we? How would we? Do it? I, maybe that's the, just change the, the terminology to majority, majority sign up. Majority sign up. Say it that way. And, and, and don't repeat the card check. When yeah, they say it. yeah, yes. Yeah, majority the sign up. And if they, you know, that takes away the reason they they don't want to do majority mm -hmm. sign up because that takes away that window they have to beat the crap out of the workers and scare the bejesus out of them if they um. If they want to union, you know, when we're organizing in New Orleans, the hotel workers, they, their whole case they pleaded, the hotel association was, we can't afford this, we can't do this, you know, whatever. None of those hotels were moving out of New Orleans. The market
market is too lucrative. I mean, it's just, it's a scare tactic. It's just bull. And we keep, people keep buying it. And it's a phony argument. That's all I can say. It's a phony argument. Yeah, I mean, I think one thing to go along the same lines is the language when you're talking about this bill is important. Yeah. And, and card check is the way that the opposing side has framed it. Majority sign up is the way you want to talk about it. Again, it doesn't take away the ballot. And one of the things you can do is turn it around on a little bit. Which company do you think is going to have better performing, happier employees? A company that treats its workers with respect, honors their wishes if they want to, or a company that uses intimidation tactics? It's about mutual respect. Well, and the other thing that just drives me nuts is in talking with folks is they somehow think that if you're in a union, that you want your business to fail. Isn't that the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard? You want your business to be successful so that you can get more hours, you can get more people working, that you can all be productive. That's the stupidest argument I've ever heard, but yet somehow they think that that's what we want. We want to bring the companies down. No, we want to be treated equal. Okay? We want to, exactly. And make no mistake, I mean, and granted, I'm not. This is my own personal opinion, but I can tell you right now, this by no way, when this bill passes, and it will pass, it doesn't level the playing field. It only brings us up some, okay? So by no means is this some sort of a home run for us that we're running away uh, with everything. They still have control of the government. Complete. I mean, come on. So. <clears throat> All right. Well, we have a question for Act does basically three things. Number one, it, uh, God, you, oh, I can't believe I'm stumbling on this. I know this like the back of my hand. And all these guys staring at me. <laughs> okay, the Employee, Free, the Employee Free Choice Act does three things. Number one, as you guys know, in organizing campaigns, what normally happens is um, uh, the workers sign interest cards, and then they go to, when they get, the union gets a majority of them, they go to the National Labor Relations Board, the company gives a list and decides whether there's enough signatures and then the company says okay you can now have an election and that election will be 13 weeks from next the fifth Tuesday of next year type thing in this in the, the change in the law will be that once you get a majority of the cards signed it will be up to the employee that's why we call it the Employee Free Choice Act. It will be the decision of the employee whether or not they want to have an election or whether or not they want to say, hey, we got 80% of the workers on cards. Let's skip that uh, election process and let's just go, we want a union. The second thing it does, once they have decided they have a union, it will say, okay, company, you have about 90 days to bargain with the union. Um, if you can't get it done then, we're going to subject you to binding arbitration, and an arbitrator will decide what the wages should be and uh, that sort of thing. Now, what has happened, over 50% of the organizing campaigns, we never get contracts on them because companies uh, won't bargain with us. They stonewall us, they discourage the workers, and so then the workers um, say forget it, you know. Um, this will say you got 90 days to um, get a contract and then we're done. Right. The other thing it does, it stiffens the penalties a bit. Cur currently the um, the, the, the laws, the penalties are basically slaps on wrist. I mean, for many of these corporations, an NLAB violation is their um, potato chip money at a big meeting. You know, it, it's, it's nothing. So the fines will be elevated so that if you violate the law, at least be a real penalty as opposed to slap on the wrist. Right. That's all it does. 
Okay. Nothing more, nothing less. Pretty That's all it does. Right? Very simple, straightforward, to the point. Okay, so let's answer some of the uh, talking points that we're hearing. Does this take away the secret ballot? No, it does not secret take away the secret ballot. Um, <laughs> it, all it says, it is the employee's choice whether or not they want to have a secret ballot. If the employee chooses to have a secret ballot, there will be a secret ballot election. Period. And, and one of the reasons people don't like the secret ballot, I mean, let's be honest here. The reason they don't like the secret ballot elections is, number one, they delay the process way down the road. And number two, that gives the company a time to hold what is termed captive audience meetings, where they bring all their employees into a room and say, you guys vote for a union. We're moving. We're shutting down. We're going to lose. We can't afford. Da, 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 da. In this economy, nobody wants to lose their job. Right. Uh, the threat of losing your job is a big one. So. Well, and some of the arguments that some employers give are that, well, if you do this, then we're going to have to relocate to Mexico. Oh, I, yeah, and, and that's, a, that's a veiled threat. Although, you know, part of the reason so many companies have relocated to Mexico moved because we've written tax laws that make it the financial advantage to do that. Exactly. So what's wrong with union that? Or no. Yeah, union, union or no. no. It's cheaper for them to go down there. Right. And at some point, I mean, I guess the American people, and this is off Employee Free Choice Act, but at some point in this country, we got to make a decision on how we want to live. Right. We cannot... Uh, the economy is going to collapse. The middle class will collapse under um, $5 an hour wages. I mean, it just, you're not, you can't buy a house. I mean, businesses are going to go under if that kind of thing keeps on. They're already feeling the pinch now. So that's off message. And so let me get back on what else would you like to know about the employee free choice? Act? What are you asking people to do right now? We're asking people right now to do a couple things. Number one. Um, the Chamber of Commerce is um, helping generate millions of phone calls across this country, and they're lighting up the phones in the senator's office. We need to do the same thing because they don't think, you know, if we don't do play that silly game, then she's going to think that uh, both of our senators are going to think we don't want it. Well, we do want it. So we need to call our senators and tell them. We're asking to write a letter, write a note to your senator saying you think this is a good idea. Uh, very simple. I mean, this is a time for us to be involved in the government, right. our government, right. and let them know what we think, because we have been getting whacked for long enough. This is our chance. This is the one chance for working people. Um, it's the, it is the, the National Labor Relations Act has been around for 50 years, and it's not, nothing's happened to it in 50 years. This is our big shot. Um, to get it fixed. And part of the reason the Chamber is so scared is because President Obama has said openly, unions are not the problem. They're the solution. They're the solution. Absolutely. The President has said that and he says, you get the bill on my desk, I'll sign it. Right. And, and that's why folks are so concerned. The opposition is so concerned about it. Okay. Goodman, host of Democracy Now!, your daily grassroots global, unembedded, independent, international news hour. Watch Democracy Now! here on AOC Channel 19 in Lafayette, weekdays at 11 a.m. and 11 p.m. Tune in. Some say irreversible consequences are 30 years away. 30 years? That won't affect me. I'm a retired union business agent from Lafayette, Louisiana. 
You mean there are unions in Lafayette? Well, sure. Okay. All right. So tell me, why is the uh, Employee Free Choice Act so important to local folks? Well, I think it's so important to the local folks because it would give them, to me, it would give them a level playing field for a contract for their jobs, security and benefits. I think it's because they would have a choice, which many of them do. And I have, I have gone through the system. I've held two elections in the past where if I had the court check uh, act, we would have won those two elections, okay? But because the company was able to hold these meetings, and you talk about a secret ballot, there's no such a thing as a secret ballot. Right. The company has a representative there at the election. They usually pick the spot for the election, which is usually on the job. And the, com the most common thing they tell the worker before the election, is this going to be your last day you're going there? Because they're going to vote. Right. And if they vote for the union, they, they tell them they're going to shut down. Right. So I think we need those things. I think it would be benefit for the workers to have a more level playing field. And no union wants to break a company, I'm going to tell you. Right. None. And I would take ten small companies compared to one big one any day. Because you represent more people right. and you're able to help the company and the workers. Right. Yeah. Well, and explain to me a little bit more about that. So many of the local businessmen... Uh, here are saying, oh my God, unions would bring us down. We wouldn't be able to go. But it seems to me kind of stupid because the employees want the business to succeed. Right. Well, the, the, the people that tell you that are kind of stuck. They're stuck with the opposition that's out there today, and they really don't have a fair choice of to be union or not to be. Right. Because if they go union with the benefits and wages and conditions of the job, they basically got to compete with open shop contractors and they tear them up. They lowball the job. They bring out-of-state workers in. And that's why they're afraid of it. It's not because it's not good for the worker or the company. Right. It's not good for their prospect of getting a job. Right. But we need to level the playing field across this country for American people. Right. That's what we need. And that's what I think this would do, to be honest with you, in helping this area. I, I can give you one example. I had 21 workers on a job. I had 16 signed cards. I lost that election 11 to 10 after they got through meeting with them and threatened them and whatever they did. But I mean, that's what usually happens on these things. Uh, Tell me why for the average worker here in Acadiana, especially someone who um, may have just entered the workforce, what does a union do for them? A union, if, if they're run correctly and done right, usually gives them stability in their benefit packages for their family. Uh, their retirement plan is very important. I can tell you that for a fact. And it also takes care of uh, minor problems on projects that shouldn't, shouldn't be worker and boss addressed. It should be addressed as a group so that it protects the worker and the company from any uh, unsafe working conditions and stuff like that. That's what I think it would do for the local people here. Outstanding. So what are you asking local folks to do? I mean, you're obviously very well known in the community. What are you asking your friends and family to do right now? I'm asking them to contact our representatives, senators and that, that are involved in this, Ms. Landrieu and that, to basically give them the calls and help them understand that this is very important to the working people of this country and to support this act. You doing the interviews or you doing yes, the interviews? Yes, I'm doing it. No, I don't do interviews anymore. We, they, they're not quit that. I got you on the spot. We got the answer, brother. Right there. All right, so you opened up your facility here. Tell us about the Carpenters Union here, and uh, you guys have a really great facility. Well, I appreciate you saying that. We have a... Uh, we have more or less it was started off to be a state-of-the-art facility and, and uh, we're, we've come a long way. We used to be across the street. We have the training center. Uh, there's not many of them in this area, particularly in this area, so we're proud of it and uh, we're glad to help out, especially on something like this here. Employee Free Choice Act is very important. Outstanding. Outstanding. Well, we greatly appreciate uh, the use of your facility. Um, this is uh, a, a unique situation where you guys actually have such a great building uh, to provide to your members. Well, it's, it's not only uh, 
you know, the employers that we have collective bargaining agreements with here make this possible for us too. So uh, it's very it's a, great it's, resource. it's a great resource, and we appreciate the people we we, we service, and uh, that's how it came about. And we're glad we're glad to be part of it. Well, thank you for opening it up to us today. It's okay, great, you're great welcome. Meeting. My pleasure. Thanks so much. My right. pleasure. And uh, so, Terry, you put together uh, this event today. Tell us why you wanted to put this event together. Well, I wanted to put this event together to get the the membership active and, and have them call our legislators, not legislators, but our senators and congressmen in Washington and let them know that this is a very, very important piece of legislation. It's, uh, it, there's a lot of information that's coming out from the opposition, spending a lot of money, hundreds of millions of dollars, to make sure that this piece of legislation doesn't happen. They're, they're sending out uh, falsehoods, misinformation, and actually the, what it does is it amends, it's an amendment to the, law, the existing law. It doesn't strip any language from the, the existing law, it only adds to it. And what it does, it, it, it gives the employee, the worker, the choice to decide how they would like to organize and who that they would like to have represent them in their in their issues, right? right. And um, why do you think that this is even more important to the folks here in Acadiana? Well, in this area, in, in uh, Acadiana area, we we're, we're not really known as a uh, wealthy a working class. The the state of Louisiana is is really at the bottom when it comes to wages. And I think that's part of, of a law that's on the books called the, uh, what, what, what do you call it, the, uh, I'm looking for that, that word, the, the uh, title, the uh, right to work law. Yes. Yeah. The right to work yeah, law. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's actually the right to work for less law. Right. So, and that's what's happening in this state, and that's why the wages have been stagnant right. and, not, and not have gone up, say like the, uh, the corporate bosses. Right. They, I mean, their, their wages are, through the, through the roof, and we just want we just want a fair playing field. Right. We just want to be able to have our voices heard. We want to be productive in in the in the company. We want to be a part of the company and part of the success of the company. We're not trying to tear the company down with with with, with these outrageous wages, you right. know. And most of the time, it isn't the wages that's the problem. It's the benefit packages. It's the, the justice in the workplace. It's just being treated fairly and being respected. Right. And that's all we're asked for is just to be respected. Right. Uh, hopefully this, this Employee Free Choice Act uh, becomes uh, an amendment to the law and, and we can move forward with it with, with the companies together right. side by side moving forward and, and, and make, make America strong again. Great. Um, right now what are you asking uh, local uh, working men and women to do right now? Right now, we're asking uh, our membership and and their families to call our senators. Uh, there's there's a number that we're gonna that we have. It's on the bottom of the screen. It's on the bottom of the screen. Uh, so it's one eight six six two zero seven two zero six zero, and that's gonna get you in touch with Senator Landry's office. It's it's very very painless. It's gonna take maybe less than thirty seconds. All you want to do, all you're going to do, is put your zip code in. It's going to, it's going to transfer you to Senator Landrieu's office, and all you have to say is that you would like Senator Landrieu to support and vote for the Employee Free Choice Act. That's it. But I also want to state that Congressman Malonso has already signed on as a co-author to this bill. I've spoken with him uh, back in in March, and he he understands what this means to the working the working people in in, in his area. So we just want to get the word out that this is not one of these uh, chicken little, the sky is falling and, you know, America is going to crumble because I'm, I'm, I'm just like David, uh, Senator Vitter. Now, I love America, too. I don't want to go anywhere. This is the greatest country in the world. We just need fairness and honesty. Thanks so 
much for watching Blue Mondays. This was a special Blue Mondays dedicated to the working men and women of Acadiana. We hope you enjoyed the show, and we hope to see you back here each and every uh, Monday night, the second and fourth Mondays of uh, the month, on AOC Channel 15 uh, right here in Acadiana. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.